a lot of people, especially those who are new to the world of 3D modeling, animation, or design, want to know why there is a sort of universal hatred directed towards Autodesk, the giant software company. We will try to answer this question by giving you an overview of what Autodesk is and how through its behavior and policies it became one of the most hated software companies in the world. We can basically break down the answer into six very important reasons why this has been the case and you probably want to watch the next 10 minutes or so if you want to avoid certain things that will prove to be very important for you if you want to have a career or to create a business related to 3D modeling or design. Number six, Autodesk is a huge business. In order to understand why people don't really like Autodesk, we need first to have a general idea of what it is. It is a company that was founded in 1982 by John Walker, who was a co-founder of the first version of AutoCAD, which is the company's flagship for computer-aided design. Over the years, Autodesk developed many pieces of software that helped it make a truckload of money, but it bought and acquired many other 3D computer-aided design and 3D animation software as well. People did not seem to have an issue with how Autodesk conducted its business until the last 15 years or so when it started to become even bigger. Autodesk is a publicly traded company, meaning it has to perform better every year to increase revenue for shareholders and to keep clients happy at the same time. So in the attempt to do so, it has to create a balance and keep everyone happy. But it seems like over the years, many users started to express their concerns that Autodesk grow detached from serving the best interests of their clients, especially single users and small business owners. One of the things they complained about is the rate at which new tools and features were added to let them do their work faster and more effectively, and this takes us to the next point. Number 5. Lack of Development over the years, computer graphics technology has grown so fast, but Autodesk customers did not feel like it was really doing a great job at keeping them updated with better and new tools and features. And that led many of them to switch to other alternatives, especially those who work as freelancers or have independent businesses. But those who worked as studios had to use Autodesk products because it is industry standard and many studios until this date has it as an essential part of their pipelines. We're not saying that Autodesk software is bad. On the contrary, it is great because it helps many artists and studios to finish big portion of their projects in many industries, but when you see only a few insignificant features added to the software you use, then you start asking questions. For example, in Autodesk Media and Entertainment Division, users of software such as 3ds Max did not really see many changes that can be considered a push forward until the last few years where little by little we are seeing improvements that can be considered worthwhile. Number 4. Perpetual Licenses versus Subscriptions In the past, 3D software users used to pay perpetual licenses to use software. But all that changed when Autodesk decided to switch to selling their software as a service under the SAS model under which users have to pay monthly or yearly subscriptions. This change was not welcomed by many users and actually affected Autodesk's revenue negatively in the short term when they announced it back in 2016. But from that point to this date, Autodesk revenue went through the roof because clients had to keep paying consistently, but a good portion of these clients were not very happy about it. Number 3. Understanding the Community also, many people say that the problem with Autodesk is the fact that it does not understand the community, especially when it comes to media and entertainment. Things are changing fast and the industry is moving forward, and Autodesk has not understood the community for a very long time, at least for the last decade or so. There are dozens of examples that can show why it is the case, but I think everyone has already noticed, especially those who have been around for long enough. And if you do not understand the community in which you derive a part of your business revenue, then there will be always complaints and people will feel like they are underestimated and underserved, which means less business and less profit. I'm not saying that making money or profiting is bad. I don't think that Autodesk is evil because they want to maximize their profits. It is part of the business world and they are not doing something illegal or something that is against the law. 
The problem is that they don't understand the business they are in from the point of view of the community. They don't understand their customers' needs either, to the extent that makes the majority happy. Of course, you can't make 100% of the clients happy, but at least if you make 80 or 90% satisfied, it means you are listening. At no point in time has the 3D customers as a whole been in such turmoil with many people upset, angry, and pissed off beyond words. Some of the artists that have been using Autodesk products complained that the company created enough ill feelings for its customers in this community. Number 2. They buy everything In the last 20 years or so, Autodesk has become famous in the computer graphics community for buying as many pieces of software as they can. Not only that, but they acquire the whole companies with their employees and their technologies that they have been working on. Many people seem to repeat the same saying about Autodesk, which goes something like this. If you can't compete with the competition, just buy them. Autodesk has a tremendous buying power and they have been demonstrating that throughout the years. But people don't have a problem with that, they have a problem with what happens to the software they use when it becomes a property of Autodesk. Some of the terrible things that can happen to software when acquired by the giant software corporations such as Autodesk is, first, they can get stagnant in their development because the buyer wants to make a return on investment with little to no effort of development. Second, they can be integrated into other pieces of software after harvesting their technology, which will force users to use that software instead, or use completely a new package. Third, which is the worst option, the acquired software can get discontinued, which is the worst nightmare for many users who rely on it in their careers or in their businesses, which leads us to the next point. Number 1. They discontinued many good software Over the 40 years or so Autodesk has been in business, it acquired and discontinued many pieces of design and 3D animation software. Some of them were a failure, but others were on top of their games. And this is the case for Softimage, one of the most intuitive 3D software for working on VFX for film and making video games. It was unfortunately discontinued in 2015 after it was bought from the Avid technology company in 2008. Lots of Softimage users were looking elsewhere and vowing not to spend a single penny on Autodesk. Some people began using other software and sometimes paying more elsewhere just to avoid going through the same sense of frustration again. Some people went through a journey of switching the main 3D software they use for work in a way that made them feel trapped and out of control. For example, some artists were using 3ds Max or Maya but switched later to Softimage because they did not like the way Autodesk managed its development to find themselves again under the mercy of Autodesk when Softimage was bought in 2008. But this is not the worst part, because a few years later in 2015, Softimage was discontinued, which forced them to go back to using 3ds Max or Maya again. We're not saying that Autodesk software are bad, but the way things happen when Autodesk is in charge does not always make people feel like they are having the best experience they can get. The problem is not changing the software itself, but if you consider the many years they spent going from being competent in one product to becoming competent in another, and then another, and having that stomped out, you will understand how impactful this is on one's career or business. Again, I'm not saying that Autodesk is evil or something like that, because this is part of a big game called business and making money. But countless Softimage proficient artists suddenly found themselves less employed and had a limited amount of time to start getting real competent and proficient using other tools, forced to make a decision that will impact their career after they had already made a decision that impacted their career in a positive way before. Countless small business owners and one-man shops that relied on Softimage to put food on the table suddenly had to deal with the reality of how Autodesk decided to deal with their customers. Many small businesses were looking at massive costs of overhauling their pipelines, retraining people, finding qualified artists, and so on. And this is just one of the most obvious examples that Autodesk users know about. This video was not created to damage the image of Autodesk or make it look bad because I wanted to lose its customers, even though I'm sure that there are some people who wanted to be burned to the ground. We are just addressing the opinions of some users in the community 
backed up with some documented facts from recent history. But I think it can help some people to get an idea about why, generally speaking, Autodesk is hated because this question is asked frequently. I have nothing against Autodesk, and I am not a victim of something they have done to me in the past. And I do believe that as long as you don't violate the law or try to hurt people intentionally without a reason, you are free to do whatever you want, but it does not mean I like it or agree with it. If you are an Autodesk user and you are happy with the results, keep doing that and good luck for you in your career or business. And if you don't really like their software or don't agree with their policies, you are welcome not to use it. Because there are many alternatives, even free ones, both for 3D animation software like Blender or other design and engineering code software that you can find easily on the internet. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.